Here we have part two of my series on I bought a whole mess of postcards and how I'm going to sell them. <laughs> we already went through these in part one and now it's time to go through this hunk. So these postcards are what I would call bread and butter. Not super exciting, not super exotic. Uh, we're not going to find any $60 winners in here, I don't think. Or I know, because I looked at them. But I'll talk about what they are and how I'm pricing them and how to deal with your sort of bread and butter postcards. So this lot, I'm going to set the price at $14.50, or best offer. And I know that's kind of high for a lot of these and that they're more likely to sell in the Mm, optimistically seven to ten dollar range but that's okay because that's what I'm going for and it's always good to price higher and see if somebody will buy them at that price. Greetings from Camden that is New Jersey not London. This postcard is decorated with mica which is what we will call Edwardian glitter. <laughs> it's a little special because of that though it is super written on and kind of a disaster in general. But I think it's uh, kind of interesting that this is early enough that the person was used to having to write the message on the front and having the back be just for the address. Even though this is after that whole legislation disappeared, they still treated this card like it was from that era. So it's kind of interesting. And mica. Here we have another mica card and a similar outlining these pansies. Maybe these go together in a lot. I'm not totally sure if I'll do that. It could be a good idea. This faux wood grain is kind of novel and this is an undivided back card like I was just talking about, but it's unused and it's got glare. <laughs> this is the Times building in New York, which Usually I would not even bother trying to sell if it were just a normal view, but this is kind of interesting in this weird sort of uh, gradient 3D monotone thing they have going on. This is not super uncommon, but it's uncommon enough that it's worth trying to sell. You could see just how embossed it is on the back. It's a pretty deep one for a postcard. I might be able to clean this up a little bit with an eraser. Might might not go. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's it's a uh, <laughs> the scum is deeper. Actually, that did help a little, but it's more a discoloration of the paper than surface uh, scuffing and wear. So it's might not get too much better. We'll sell that one. Here we have a message from the top of the city of Baltimore. Blanks to fill in where they assume the date begins with one nine and one, which is kind of pleasing. And this is again, the Maryland Casualty Company Tower. So that's an insurance concern, which is a thing that people are interested in. This is just kind of an unusual early version. And I like the fill in the date thing. This is a Un an undivided back again, so that dates this card to pre, what, 1907, I believe, 1906. That's a good diagnostic clue, and you're supposed to write your message on, on the front. And just so you know, I don't have those dates memorized because they're in the pull-down menu in the item specifics on eBay. When you're filling in your postcard details, you can look and it will tell you the dates. Here we have a funny military postcard, um, copyright 1917, and it's, ha ha, a woman telling a man to stand to attention, ha ha ha, but, you know, it's kind of cute in the context of its time. So, World War One. I, I might put this in the World War I um, category instead of postcards. This is, well, I always like to sell postcards of ships. And here we have a paddle steamer, um, Burlington, leaving Trenton for Philadelphia. Somebody wrote 9.506, 8 p.m. on there. This is again an undivided back card. So it's early and it's transportation related, which I 
think is always a good category. This one, this is a humorous transportation postcard. Um, can I bring you anything up? <laughs> Seasickness is hilarious. Anyway, um, I really like the way this one has been colorized. I don't think it was done by hand because it's too tidy, but I think it's very appealing in its colors. Maybe it was done by hand, actually. When if you look at the bell, it kind of goes outside the lines a bit. No, I think it was printed. But at any rate, it's visually attractive and it's kind of funny in a seasickness is funny kind of way. Again, undivided back, early card. Here we have some angel heads. This is, a, this is actually an art card. It's Sir Joshua Reynolds. And let's see about the date on this. I don't know, it could be anything, but it's relatively early. And I, art cards, again, are very difficult sell, but angels, people love. So we're going to give this one a try on account of the angels and the general generalized cuteness, not sell it on Sir Joshua Reynolds account per se. And here is yet another angel, different sort of thing. This is a Christmas card. This is kind of a modified photo kind of dealy. You know, it's a sort of charming little girl and people do like angels, as I was saying. This is a, again, not a real photo and it has some rather unfortunate tape, scotch tape staining on the corners, but it's an interesting Eastern European sort of scene with the whole town brought out and then the band, they have the brass section over here and the string and wind section over here and the little kids and I don't know I was just kind of charmed by this and the sort of haphazard coloration this one I think is hand colored it's pretty sloppily done I mean I'm not faulting it if this were my job to colorize these photos all day by hand I'd be pretty sloppy too but yeah it's it's not a real photo but it is probably hand colored which you can sort of see in this like in this woman's dress the red dress like it's not even it's all over the place <laughs> here's um there's a bunch of these they're fort dix i believe i believe they're fort dix but they're all world war ii era soldier fort postcards and this one is this one is a as a uh a potty joke we got the war savings bond postage stamp and all this victory bonds, all this World War II stuff, postmarked 43. You know, it's signed by a specific soldier. We can look him up, but I don't know that it will yield much. This one, again, similar, Fort Dix, New Jersey, from a different private, but same kind of deal, with World War II. And then back to the mica flowers here. More glittery pansies with best wishes. I don't know, maybe I will do a lot of these instead. This is, you know, you see the embossing. And that's all there is to say about that. This one is Christmas. Again, not usually a big seller without a really glamorous Santa, but this is pretty attractive, I thought, with the deer and the, the bell that says Gloria. I don't know, I just kind of liked it. And it's again embossed. Pretty standard fare. We'll try to sell that one. More mica flowers. Roses this time. Best wishes to grandma. This is an undivided back. And we have more angels. This one has um, the religious aspect going for it. Although it's Easter, I think people of a certain bent would like the whole cross and angels illustration going on here. This one is <laughs> kind of pleasingly strange. This um, isn't a topic topical card in any way but we do have a boy in a sailor suit 
either riding or trying to harness the power of some swallows above a castle with just tons of gold everywhere and these little stars in the border. I don't know what's going on, but I kind of like it. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> Another one with a lot of gold. This one is a little bit less garish. I thought these white berries were kind of attractive. Nice illustration. This is really nothing super out of the ordinary in terms of postcards, but I'm just going to um, go on aesthetic value alone with this. It's postmarked 1909. This maybe is in too high, high a price bracket, I don't know, but Bad Habits of Hackettstown, New Jersey, which are apparently stuffing your ripped pants with paper. I don't even know. I don't get this joke. Maybe I'm being really stupid. Please tell me if I'm being naive and gullible here because I don't get this really, but maybe if I were from Hackettstown, New Jersey, I would. At any rate, I'm going to just go on the theory that someone will find that amusing. More glitter and flowers. I mean mica, not glitter. Um, this one is a, another Christmas <clears throat> with some cute kids uh, ice skating with, and about to chuck snowballs at someone or something. I think ice skating is a good um, thing to hang its hat on and the cute kids and this sort of typical, one of the typical illustration styles of the time, the rosy cheeks. All right, we have overlooking the public square from Wilkes-Barre Deposit and Savings Building, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, this has quite a bad crease in it. It does have going for it that it's from a specific savings bank in a specific place, and it's a bird's eye view-ish, at least a high vantage point view, all of which are things people are looking for. And this is a linen card, but it does not have the white border. So that is possible. It does have that texture. And again, this crease is horrible, but what can you do? All right, these I have a bunch of hunting cards and I think they're gonna get kind of lotted up. Maybe I should put them in lots, in the lots pile. So basically there's these two views. There's the fellow with all the hounds and the hunting horn and it looks like he's holding something dead, like a fox head or something. I don't really know. I don't want to think about it that much. And then we have the uh, hunters on their mounts trotting off to kill things. These are both um, paintings and they're both printed in Germany, same series. So I think Though I think these are English hunters. I don't think that other people wear the red coats. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, we'll sew these two together. I'm going to put these in the lots pile. And then we've got more. And yeah, and then we'll sell these two together. So those are going in lots. This is um, Fraulein Dora Parnas. And she was a French actress and singer, I believe. This is a real photo that has been hand colored and clearly the photo was not really prepared properly because it has faded horribly and leaving the pigments of the um, paint used to color it much more prominent. Uh, it looks pretty bad, but still quite collectible, I think, as this is a known actress. Yeah, there's Dora Parnaus. This is a linen hotel roadside type thing. The Jolly Roger on Hampstead Turnpike of Beth in Bethpage, New York, Long Island. This one, sometimes these are just so common, but I like this one because it had the inside view of this diner with the soda fountain and the people and I just thought this might be actually something someone was nostalgic about and would purchase. And also has this little map on the back. So he's kind of like 
what's that show? Diners, drives and drive-ins, diners and dives. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. But anyway, those sometimes can do pretty well. For some reason, there are two of these. It's like a just married card. It's German from the Primus Postcard Publishers. And it says down here, Die Fahrt ins Glück. So it's like, good luck, or, the, or on the way, I think. It's, it's like an idiom, good luck on the way, whatever. Anyway, but it's kind of cute with this Edwardian couple with the angel holding their bouquet in the back and the angels in the sky or cherubs or whatever. This has some appeal and there's two of them. So I'm going to use a multiple quantity listing for that. So this is the SS Morrow Castle, a ground at Asbury Park, New Jersey. And it's a pretty interesting story, albeit a sad one, if you're not familiar with it. This uh, liner used to do the run from, I think, New York to Havana. It was somewhere to Havana in the 30s. And on one of its runs, it caught on fire and there was quite a melee and a lot of people ended up dying, like 130, I think, out of... 500 some odd so it was it was a pretty tragic situation and although there had been a lot of fire precautions in place they really failed in the situation and I think that a lot was learned but it was bad bad scene and anyway this boat actually sort of floated after the fire floated up and ran aground at Asbury Park by the boardwalk and was there for some time before it was towed away to be scrapped and apparently the water was low enough that you could wade out and touch it, which is really morbid, but true story. So this is a view of that. Not um, terribly uncommon, but I think it should sell nonetheless. And finally in this stack, we have, no, not finally, I take it back, there's two more. We have this card, which again has mica, but it also has, this is like a tipped on, die cut and tipped on just means that it's uh, paper applied to another surface. It's often used uh, referring to books when they have like some sort of paper label glued on to the cover. At any rate, um, it's applied to this kind of neat white paper which has not a texture but a reflective um, faceted quality to it and it's been sort of round along the edges for some reason, artistic reason, and it's this weird shape. But it is a postcard, and it's got this sort of typical Victorian iconography here, although it is a little later than Victorian. And then finally, we have a view of the residence of Stoddard Gordon, or perhaps Gordon Stoddard, or perhaps Stoddard and Gordon, I don't really know in Kudabakville, New York. And this I really don't know much about, but I figured it is a, an, an unusual enough location that there might be some interest in it. So that, my friends, is the pile of cards I'm going to list likely around $14.50 on eBay, aiming for ideally $10 a piece, but happily accepting less in most cases. Again, I might lot up some of those mica flower ones because I think it would just make everyone's life happier. All right. In the next edition of this postcard series, I will be talking about more postcards. So stay tuned and thank you and take care. Mm -hmm.